John, you've been around the gaming industry for a really long time. How does Web3 game publishing differ from the current and traditional paradigm? So I, I think the way I would explain it is that um, if you're playing a game and when you go into that game, a lot of those things, you're, you're collecting those characters. And at the end of the day, I'm spending spending a little bit of money to maybe get a chance to have Spider-Man or have one of their characters. And, and then that's, it's a form of entertainment. And, and, and that's great. That's, that's it. That's, it ends there. It ends there. And that's, that's awesome. But what, what I think we're starting to see is now this shift to where these, you know, um, these assets can be an asset, right? It's something I can make decisions. And that's really kind of how we got into this uh, to, from the beginning of Mythical is we thought about kind of what was happening in the industry and thought, you know, there's this whole new blockchain world out there. And I, as a game maker, you kind of spend 20 or $30 in a game to support it. But I was never one of those whales that would spend a lot of money in a video game. And then some of these 2D projects, 2D cat projects like CryptoKitties came out. And I suddenly dropped like five or $600. And to me, I was like, why, why did that change? Why did that, you know, what, what, why did that happen? And, and then that was really the part to me. It was like, it's now kind of an asset, right? I can make a decision. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not trying to flip it for a massive profit. I'm just saying I have the, the, I have the, the, the ability to decide what I want to do. I could give it away, burn it, sell it, trade it, whatever. But I think everyone eventually is going to jump into it. It looks like it's going to be the future. This idea of a play and own yeah. economy in gaming. What do you think are the first interesting games beyond what you've already published <laughs> that are going to come out there that will drive the adoption? A lot of these games take a long time to build. A Call of Duty can take three or four years, and that's on a game engine that's been around for 20 years, right? A Grand Theft Auto can take five or six or seven years. So it takes some time. And, and some of these, you know, you're building worlds. And I think what we need to see is we need to see that utility, right? Why I don't want to just be buying an asset and flipping it and making some money. And I, I want that to have a purpose in the game. It needs to change the game design, yeah. right? And longevity, to your point. And, I, and exactly. Longevity is really, you know, I mean, what's, what's really interesting about scarcity in general is there's kind of two forms of scarcity that you can either force scarcity with like a limited quantity or there's time scarcity, right? If something is no longer available with time, it becomes more scarce. And so longevity really drives a lot of that. In fact, some of the things with like Fortnite, the game Fortnite, some of the things if you ever see, there's some of those are sold kind of illegally on like eBay or whatever. And um, those are usually not the current assets. Those are assets you can't get anymore from three years ago. Right. It's a natural scarcity for to, consume, to consumers. And the Web3 kind of solves some of that. With Mythical, do you think there's a roadmap where you can become as big as some of the biggest game publishers out there today? I mean, that's, that's, that's the hope. I mean, I think what we're building in Mythical is really first and foremost a platform. So we, we've been looking and we jumped into this world, we, we looked at blockchain and blockchain is really, really powerful in what it can do with, with transparency and with a muta, you know, mutable ledger. But the idea of throwing 4 billion gamers, which is what we have now, 4 billion gamers directly into this world of, hey, if you lose this private key, if you leave that on right, your desk, it. it's gone. you've lost Zelda, right? right? That's a scary right. thing for the industry. I think we, we really took it and said, hey, let's build a platform first that protects gamers at all costs. So we actually, you log in with an account. So if you lose your password, you can get it reset and not lose your assets. Now we've also tried to build it to where as people want to do more, you can do that. So you can now bridge an asset out of our chain and you can go put it in, in a MetaMask account on Ethereum or whatever you want to do. So, so we've really tried to protect gamers and we've really tried to drive them there. So that's what we're building. Um, you know, we're going to be building a few games on top of that. We have Blancos, um, a block party is our first game on PC and Mac. We just announced it's coming to Epic Game Store, which is really exciting. They have about 200 awesome. million monthly, you know, players in that yeah. store. So it's going to be big growth there, we think. We just announced a new title with NFL Rivals. So we think we can build a portfolio of games that are truly focused around this utility of what comes next, right? How do you use game design? And then we're also licensing out to other, th other, other third parties. And we just announced a few of those titles this week, too to really grow. So yes, we, we do think we can be a very you know foundational company in the space. Well, and there's probably a leadership role for Mythical in this whole arena, given your long-term experience in it. Definitely. We've, been, we've, been, we've also been talking to a lot of the groups about trying to figure out those standards. So I think, I think um, hopefully we'll be announcing something like, before consensus too Consensus is always important in these things. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think just having, having the people that are really touching this from all different aspects, you know, from the esports angle and from, from the, the blockchain angle and from the game development, game publishing angles, we want to think about everybody's opinion of how we move that forward. And I think I think you'll start seeing some groups start to come together and, and, and really try and push the standards forward.